praise yet for Christ again. Alleluia, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore. Singing forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our second song of praise is hymn 88. I sing the mighty power of God. Hymn 88. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountain rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and filled the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day, the moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eyes. If I survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or floor below, but make thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. Creatures that borrow life from thee are subject to thy care. There's not a place where we can sleep, but God is present. All right, we'll take one more before we go to our opening hymn. Do we have any favorite, any selection from anyone? One eighty-three. Hymn one eighty-three. Okay, let's see. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me for we left. Bright was above and I on Calvary. I will sing of Jesus' love and let's praise. My heart shall give me a sign that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Oh, the death of love divine, nurse or heaven can never know how the sin as dark as mine can be made as white as snow i will sing of jesus love and let's praise my heart shall give me a sign that I might live, I will sing His love to me. Nothing good for Him I've done, how could He? Such love be so, Lord, I own. My heart is one, help me now, my love to show. I will sing of Jesus' love and let's praise. My heart shall give me a sign that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Amen. Or 
have the opening hem is hem 500, which is take time to be holy, hem 500. Take time to be holy, be it off with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friend of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing is blessing to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friend in thy conduct, his lightness shall be. It's time to be holy, let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. Enjoy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And look into Jesus, still trust in his word. Take Time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Those who shall be fitted for service above. Amen. Good night, everyone. The privilege is mine to welcome all of you to our church tonight, be it near or far. I extend this special welcome to those of our visiting friends that are visiting with us for the first time or those that are not a part of the fold of God. I welcome you not to just another Wednesday night service, but to a night of prayer and praise under the theme Midnight Miracles. May our hearts be inspired and blessed by tonight's program as we share in fellowship with one another and commune with our Lord and Savior. And so you can feel a little more welcome and comfortable here at home on Zoom. We'll join together singing the song, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in his fountain and cleansed by his blood join here with jesus as we travel i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god you may notice we say brothers and sisters round here it's because we're a family whose hearts are so dear. We all share the tears and rejoice in each victory, for I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in his fountain and cleansed by his blood. 
join in with Jesus as we travel along. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. On tonight again, to worship God in this manner. are on Facebook, whether we are on WhatsApp. God has been good to us and truly we are here tonight to receive another blessing from God. So at this time we are going to invite Sister Marsha to give us the scripture reading. Afterwards, Brother Rose will give us the opening prayer. Sister Marsha. The scripture reading is taken from Acts 16, verse 16 to 26. I'll read in your hearing. Acts 16, verses 16 to 26. And it reads us, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought our masters much gain by sooth saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God. We shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Verse 26 and last, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were loosed. Here in the portion of God's holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Kind loving Father in heaven. Tonight, Lord, it's a privilege that we can assemble in this way to worship you. We realize, Lord, that how important these gadgets are for worship. As we come tonight, Lord, we want to say thanks for your goodness towards us in spite of our frailty. And we want to thank you for the way you kept us from the, from the night past until now. Lord, may we, as we listen to what is, what is about to be said, that it will draw us closer to you. And we also pray that all of us will just choose the section that goes for us and build upon it to be spiritually better person. Thank you for everything and thank you for your plan of salvation. I pray for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 All right. Good night, everybody, again. Good night. This is our prayer night.
And at this time, we are going to go in a little season of prayer and some testimonies. Um, Sister Percy should be on at this time, but she's having a little problem with her device. So I'm going to continue until she comes. So at this time, can I call on Sister Paulette Lawson to give us her testimony from Irish Ben? Is Sister Paulette on? Yes, she is. All right. Are you ready, sis? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, my brother. Are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. I want to sing a little prayer chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all there is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives. Holy God, our Father, you are our creator. All glory and honor belong to you. We continue to praise and give you all the glory and honor. Dear God, we thank you for sparing our lives up to this minute. Despite all that is going on, you see it fit for us to be in the land of the living. We are asking you to purge us and watch, watch us. Help us to put away sin in all its form. Like David, dear father, help us to acknowledge our sin and let our sins always be in front of us so we can confess it and take it off the list. Too many times we have covered our sin in the name of hereditary um, traits, in the name of defending ourselves. But dear Father, give us this humble spirit so that we can make amends and start worshiping you in the right and proper way. We are in indeed in a sorrowful time, dear Father. Death, destruction, sickness is all around us. But dear God, us to continue to recognize that you are charge. Help us to be strict. Help us not to embrace their father. Help us to go at our time. They are those their father who are sick. By name I mentioned Brother Gibson and I readily remember, but their father, again we are asking you to anoint them with your healing hand. Help them to remain focused. Help them to remain firm. Put them, dear Father, in the palm of your hands so they, ne they may never be fearful. There are some of us, dear Father, who are living keenly. Open our eyes to see the time that we are, dear Father, and, and, and start worshiping you and start keeping your commandments. Dear God, your People are oppressed, they are depressed, but you remain our comforter. Oh God, comfort our hearts. Not to make mention their father or sister who have lost her, 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 her sister today. Oh God, we continue to comfort them, their father, and continue to find the resources so they can put away their, their loved one in, in a dignified manner. We are in such a sorrowful time. Um, dear Father, but place peace in our heart and joy. And may we come this platform in which your, your children can come, set aside, and come and worship. And, 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 and even though the doors are not open, but we, we, we continue to worship you and let the enemy know that you are our God. Be with us, dear Father, and help us to have that love one for another because we are all in this game together. And we only have one enemy, which is Satan. And he's, he's fighting us from all angles. And it becomes so complex, dear Father. He wants us to go against each other. But help us to realize it is we are not fighting each other. It is the enemy who wants us to be at each other. 
O oh God, give us that insight, dear God, and help us to pray one for another because we want to make it in your kingdom as we see prophecy unfolding. Give us that strength day after day to continue that faith walk, dear Father, and seal us for your kingdom. Be with every member here in this, on this platform. Strengthen and keep them and help them to have that blessed hope as well. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. We are going now to take two testimonies. Can we have the testimony from Sister Julie now? And then we'll take Sister Paulette's testimony. Is Sister Julie there? Sister Paulette, would you go ahead with your testimony? We're not hearing you. Either. We're not hearing you, Sister Paula. Are you hearing now? Yes, I'm hearing you a little better now. All right. There are so many testimonies. Sometimes you have to be um choosing <laughs> because the Lord has indeed done all things for us. And, you know, just to encourage others, continue that Christian walk despite the, the challenges, despite the tests and trials. I remember about three years ago, I was in a very dismal state. I, I got burnt out. I was on my way to the medical missionary course when I was on the bus and a, a couple of phone calls coming in to say your house was on fire. Mm -hmm. And my God, it was so devastating to me. And it's like my whole world was turned upside down. Mm -hmm. And I maintain a, a, a level of uncomfortableness for around about three or four months, thanking the Lord that I have neighbors here to assist. And I see where the Lord has changed around situation. Many a time I was very discouraged, but I continue to praise him. I continue to worship him. And knowing the examples of the, the, the patriarchs and, and everybody in the Bible, how they press on, I, I myself joined that, that long line. And I see where the Lord has turned chains of events for me. And I'm, I'm here and, and, and this um, situation I say this to tell them to hold fast because God is, in, is indeed there and he will turn situation. And there is another testimony. Um, I remember in, in, in Daniel 2, they said the Lord revealed secrets, dark, deep secrets. And you know, some people like well secured, but like the Israel of all in their wilderness experience, they come across many obstacles and they come across persons or nations like the Hittites, the Parasites, the, 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 the Amalekites, and we too, modern Israel, we too are surrounded. And many a times the, the, these people, they scheme up devious um, plans for us. But if we continue to praise God, worship God, you know, we'll never know, you know. That is why we are supposed to worship him because and God is sheltering us from all of these people unknowingly. And I see where the Lord revealed through persons what evil people has, um, had planned against me. And I sit and watch and see them deplete, you see? So I say this to say that, continue the Christian walk, continue the journey, because we may not know what is happening in, in, in deep darkness, but God is protecting his children, all right? And we should stay focused, give him his praise, 
and give him his thanks and give him his glory and he will do the rest for you. And, and, and last but not least, this is just an admonition um, based on, 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 on my sister's, um, her, the, the death of her, her sister today, this morning, when I was going to the hospital, by the way, Brother Gibson is, is very low and I was getting ready to, to go to the hospital. And my church sister, probably she's on this platform. She was sitting with her sister, two of them. And I passed and I said, good morning. And they all answered me. But I heard that sister, the one that died, I heard her voice quite distinctly. And I smiled to them. And they, you know, they, 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 they smiled back and they waved to me. And only to know, just in the afternoon while I was sitting here, I passed. A, 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 I see a police car and a Morgan's funeral home um, vehicle drive by. And to my surprise, it was, it was Pauline. And I say this to say that we should live and be faithful and do not slight our salvation because we do not know when death is coming. I even know I can't even, I can't believe it. I saw somebody this morning and this afternoon, maybe in the, in the space of four hours, the person is dead. So given that experience, my admonition to all is to continue the course, to fight the good fight of faith and never give up because Jesus is there with us and destiny is being decided and we should hold fast. Don't slight our salvation because the rapid movement is on and, and that includes death and destruction as well as eternal life. So hold on and be faithful. Thank you. And we should really hold on because joy comes in the morning. God has been so good to us. He has kept us through this COVID thing is still there. But boy, I'm telling you with that, we can still worship God on this platform. And we give God thanks for them because had it not been for them, we would not be worshiping tonight. Is there any time is swiftly going by? I just want to know if there's anybody out there who'd like to give a testimony, a burning testimony. We just have about a minute or so. Thank you, Sister Paulette. Anybody there so so free giving time? You hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. My name is Dennis Reed from St. Mary. And yes. thanks for having me here. Yes. Uh, in a minute, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up in a minute or less, right? So um I was really down spiritually, really down to the ground, you know, to the fact that um I didn't even want to go to church. I go to church, but I didn't want to go to church. It wasn't in me. I wasn't a bad person or anything, but just that 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 drive to go to church that I had before, I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't even want to pray and, and, and so forth. But through this COVID thing that persons see is a bad thing, it actually it actually helped me to to, 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 to be drawn closer to him. You know, when I um after after the COVID thing, I met some young people you know, with some passion with a passion that is heaven bound and I met with them and and I dwell with them and gel with them. And, and today we formed a ministry. And through that ministry, my life was really impacted. And Amen. now I can say that I'm on the path to righteousness. Amen. Amen. Amen, sir. So glad to have you. So God and God is an on time God. On the right time, God is there for you. Um, Sister Phyllis. Sister yes, ma'am. Yes. yes ma'am. Can you give us that closing close of this session? God has been so good, my sister. God be the glory. Amen. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us and fill us with your love. Almighty God, we come in your presence tonight giving you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us, even in these challenging times. Okay. Father God, we have placed ourselves in your hand for you to do for us far more than we can even Im imagine. 
to fashion us and to make us into what you want us to be. Because these times are times when we need you most. Father, we ask you tonight that you remember every single one of us. We need you with us. And your promises, we know that they are sure, they are true. You promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us when we are in our challenging times or difficult situations. And you have stood up, stood up true to all of this. And we give you praise tonight. But Lord, there are times when we don't trust you. And so we ask you to increase our faith tonight so that we'll be able to trust you more. Even though we cannot trust your hand, help us, Jesus, to trust your heart. Tonight, we ask you, Lord, to remember the sick ones in our midst. We ask for your healing touch. We ask you, great physician, that even if you cannot reach where they are tonight, we ask you just say the word and they shall be healed. So tonight, Father God, I just place every sick person in your hand and ask you to do your work in them. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to remember the children who are gone back to school and the teachers. We ask you to place an edge around them. Bless them, Father, in a mighty way and open their brain cells, those students, so that they'll be able to study, they'll be able to learn as much as they can so that they'll be ready for the examination. Mm -hmm. Give the teachers wisdom, give them strength mm -hmm. and help them, Jesus, that they will continue to trust you, that you will do it again and the students will do well. Father God, I ask you that you continue to be with our youths in the church. Father, I listen to the testimony of that young man. Yes. And I know that many more can say the same thing because of this COVID pandemic. They have drawn closer to God because they have spent time with you in prayer and also in the reading of their Bibles. They have met friends who have done good to them more than bad. But Lord, you know that there are some who are, being, who are backsliding even this time. And we ask you to give them a new lease. Send someone to help them, Jesus. And even us as the older one, let us speak words of love and kindness to them. Help us to be patient with them so that we can draw them closer to you. Lord, as we continue tonight on this platform, may you be with the preacher. Help him, Jesus, that he will deliver just as you ask him to. And that at the end of it, all of us, our heart will be so full that we will continue to spread your words to others and that they too will come to know the God whom we serve. Mm -hmm. Lord, when this is all over and done, when we reach over on the other side, when you say that there'll be no more crying, no more dying, no more pain, no more burnt out, my sister. We will all have peace and joy over there. May everyone on this platform and everywhere else help us to hold on that when you come, we'll receive you as Lord and Savior of our lives and that we'll have a wonderful time with you knowing that we will never ever part again. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing and answering our prayers. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Scott. Thank you so much, Pastor Rose, and good night again, everyone. Um, let me take this opportunity to say a very special welcome to all those who are on this platform. Let me just add my welcome to all those that are on our platform, YouTube, Facebook, as well as Zoom. Um, it's my duty tonight to introduce to you the speaker for the moment. I'll share with you the seven quick nugget, nuggets about our speaker um, as he prepares to come. One, our speaker is Elder Ryan Daly. He's an ordained elder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Albion, Manneville, Manchester. Number two, he's a final year um, religion student at Northern Caribbean University. Number three, he serves as the Manchester Lay Workers Federation as assistant vice president for personal ministries and coordinator for the central zone within the parish. 
Number four, he's married to Nadia Washington Daly. Number five, he has done ministry in other parts of the world, but he always enjoys to come home. Number six, he believes in prayer. And I believe that one is very powerful. And number seven, and most importantly, he loves the Lord. As Eldo Daly comes to share what God has laid on his heart for his people, I pray that each and every person that is online will whisper a word of prayer that the word that God has sent will be delivered in light manner. But just before um, Ella Daly comes and shares the word, we will have a song of meditation by Sister Millicent Bennett. And the next voice that you will hear is that of God's manservant, Elder Daly. Is everybody hearing me? Loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in his word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon his word for everything, for everything, yes, everything is possible with God. I read in the Bible the promise of God that nothing for him is too hard. Impossible things he has promised to do if we faithfully trust in his word. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in his word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon his word for everything, for everything, yes, everything is possible with God. All things are possible, this is his word. Receive it, it is written for you. Believe in his promises, God cannot fail. For what he has said, he will do. Creator of all things with infinite power, he spoke, they appeared by his mouth. Impossible things are not known unto him. He made us, he ruleth the earth. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in his word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone 
and rest upon his word for everything oh everything yes everything is possible with god Amen. Everything is possible with God. Let me say thank you to Pastor Dwayne Scott for his kind words of introduction. It's good to be with you this evening. Amen. And let me say thank you to the sister for that number in song. Amen. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Manchester Labor Workers Federation. Well, of course, uh, where I serve as Assistant Vice President for Personal Ministry, the President herself sent her greetings and my immediate Vice President, Odet Wright, also sent her greetings. I trust I can take back greetings to them, but I bring greetings to you from the Federation. I also greet you on behalf of my lovely wife, Nadia Washington Daly. You may not be seeing her face on set, but she's here with us tonight. And I trust and hope that as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness tonight, that the power of God will come down and glory will fill our souls. What do you say? This evening, I want to bring your attention to the book of Acts. By my watch, it is 12 minutes after, after 8. How much time do I have? Ah. Pastor, you told me I had what, 20 minutes? Yes, pray sir. For the, pray for the preacher. Pray for the All right. Let us bring, I just get straight into the word. I trust you'll understand. We go to Acts chapter 16, the same passage that was used for our scripture reading. Acts 16. And I'll just read for you from verses 16 to 26. The Bible reads, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of deviation mm, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And he came out the same hour. Verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them into the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Mercy. Verse 21 and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Mm. <laughs> 22, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. 
And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them, amen? And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone bands were loose at midnight. The sermon tonight is entitled At Midnight. Bow your heads with me while I pray. Father in heaven, we pray that you may work another miracle tonight. Work one in somebody's life, we pray. Now speak to me, through me, with me, and for me. Hide me behind the old rugged cross of Calvary. May you be glorified, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. The theme for your program tonight is Midnight Miracles. From your theme and from the text, the title of the message is At Midnight. At Midnight. When we look at the, the sermonic portion, we look at the, the scripture that was just read, we realize that verse 16 begins by saying, and it came to pass, which is to suggest that something would have happened before. There was something leading up to verse 16 where it says, and it, and it came to pass. If you look from verse 11, you'll realize that the, that, uh, the gospel was now going through Europe, uh, Philippi. Uh, so therefore, therefore, losing from trust, we came with a straight course uh, to a place called somewhere far Sia, and the next day to Nepalis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in the city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was one to be made. We sat down and spake unto the women, which is not to that. So in other words, the gospel was going through Europe. The gospel was traveling through the world. It was no Sabbath. The gospel was preached on the Sabbath. Somebody would have heard the gospel on the Sabbath. Somebody would have gotten baptized on the Sabbath. This was a person who, who, who the Bible uh, is described as one who's a self purple in the city called Theatira. This is somebody who saw the need, her name was Lydia, who saw the need to give her heart to God after heard the gospel being spoken. Verse 15 helps us to understand that she was baptized. And by the time we get, we, we get to verse 16, it says, and it came to pass. After the baptism, after the Sabbath worship, after the prayer meeting at the riverside, after the baptism, after seeing the church, the miracles of God and Silas, the other apostles and all of prayer. They saw the need to go to the house of prayer to give God thanks. To give God thanks to praise his matchless name for the souls that would have been brought to him. Uh, let me just pause just to tell somebody that every time that somebody give their heart to God, give God thanks, it's one more that could have just left the enemy's camp. Here comes Paul and Silas and the other apostles going in. As we went to prayer, a certain damsel, I'm very happy that he says a certain damsel, so we cannot discriminate against the damsel. Are you hearing me? It only says a certain 
damsel. You don't know the damsel's name. It, the text only says a certain damsel. So nobody can write off this damsel because you don't know who this damsel is. The Bible only says a certain damsel possessed. Possessed, possessed, possessed with, with, with what? With, with a spirit of divination. In other words, they were met by the devil. They were going to church to pray, but the devil showed up. Are you hearing me? You come to prayer meeting tonight, but I want you to understand that every time you go to pray, Satan showed up. Jesus had a church of 12, 12 disciples, and he was about to carry out the highest service of the church, communion service. Guess who showed up? The devil showed up here in Judah's heart. If the devil will show up in a church where Jesus is pastor, righteous pastor, carrying out the highest service of the church, what says a church with a simple pastor like myself or even one like Pastor Scott? Here are the apostles going for prayer, but here, here is a woman with a spirit of deviation, the Bible says. A spirit of the devil. Ah, he showed up, the Bible says, he met us and brought her masters. Much gain. In other words, this woman, this woman was used to bring her masters much money. The devil uses people. They will use your children, will use your mother, will use your father, use your uncle to bring glory to himself and to bring in the money. Not every time you see people with money, you must grudge them. Don't grudge people for what they have. You don't know how they get it. Not everybody you see have money. Not every money God is pleased with. The way how these men have got their money is by possessing this woman to do evil. They were led by the devil. The Bible says, the same followed Paul and Barnabas. I want us to realize, I want us to realize that there's that, that the woman is possessed. Hmm? There are four points. I, I might I just tell them. There are four points I wanted to leave. Realize that the woman is possessed. And somebody will be purified. Somebody's going to be persecuted, but somebody's privileged. Only four points. Here is the woman who is possessed. The same. Met us, which brought her master's gain by suit saying the same followed Paul and us. The devil will not leave you alone. You wonder why do we come for prayer? I said the devil will not leave you alone. He will stay on your heels. Notice the woman is possessed by the devil. Notice the woman that is possessed is following Paul around. And the woman and her words are good. The devil knows God's children. The devil acknowledges that you're God's children. Notice the text says, notice the text says, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are servants of the most high God. In other words, the devil knows God's children. The devil acknowledges that you're God's children. Hear me, but the devil is still following you around. He's still staying on your heel. He's not going to give you any break because he's not stopping until he gets your soul. Somebody may be struggling with pornography. Somebody may be struggling with lying. Somebody may be struggling with stealing. Somebody may be struggling with fornicating. Somebody may be struggling with adultery. I don't know what you're struggling with, but I don't know. But your struggle tonight is not just like that. The devil is on your heel. Bible says, she cried, these men are servants of the most high God, which show us the way unto salvation. Indeed, he showed the way to salvation. Why? Because these were the individuals that God have used to proclaim the gospel and somebody was just baptized. The devil is crying aloud. He showed us the way to salvation, trying to frustrate God's people. But hear me. But the Bible says, 
And this did she many days. But Paul, but Paul, being grieved, being fed up, being frustrated, uh, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. In other words, there is power. Oh God of mercy. There is power in the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody tonight? I said there is power. In if, 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 if somebody is possessed by the devil, who are you to call on? There is a man called Jesus. I said, call on him. Then look at somebody that says, call him up and tell him what you want. Uh, call him up and tell him what you want. You can just call him up and tell him. Uh, the notice Paul says, in the name, he didn't say the name of Buddha. He didn't say in the name of Selassie. Are you hearing me? But he said, in the name of Jesus, I command thee. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. May I tell you that in Jesus' time, there were many people called Jesus. But there's only one that was called Jesus the Christ or Christ Jesus. So Paul had to be specific as to which Jesus he's talking. So Paul said, I'm Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you, when you're in your homes, when you're in your church, and when you see them show up, you've got to be able to recognize the devil. And say, in the name of Jesus, get in there. But I, I think it's when some of us do that, we're serious politics. Am I right? I wish, I wish, I want to be a part of a church where people are not afraid of saying, in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan. I want to be a part of a church where people are not afraid to call on God. Say, Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I come to a time where people are afraid. God. Oh, they're afraid of what the elder is going to say or what, what, what the deacon is going to say. People are not afraid. That's where we are. I pray it doesn't happen in your look of the room. I pray. I've got uh, a good friend of mine, Fis Henry, brought me to your part of the world before. And it was a different experience. So I am trusting that it doesn't happen. Amen. I said, And when her master saw the hope of their gift was gone. Hmm? It's, after, after they have seen that the persecuted woman hmm, would, 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 would have been purified, huh? these people were not mad. What did they do? Uh, let me hesitate to tell you. They persecuted Paul and Silas. They persecuted the church. Why? Because the church was in Jesus. Because the church would have captured in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, they have captured so many from the enemy's stuff. And what did they do? They take off their garment. They beat them around their back. Hear me. They just like the master of the bed. They bled and suffer. The question to the church then, are you willing to suffer persecution for righteousness? Eh? Are you willing to take the beating across your, across your back? Must Jesus? Jesus carried the cross alone and the world go free. Are you willing to suffer like Jesus did? Like Paul and Silas with a bible. In stocks, in what we call chains, in cuffs, and how your hands were bound, and they have thrown in prison. They were being persecuted. All the past. That I've seen somebody who was possessed, and in the name of Jesus, and Jesus allowed the person to be purified. And after that, all they could face for it was persecution. But the Bible says, at midnight, at midnight, 
And at midnight, Paul and Silas pray. Paul and Silas knew a God that can deliver. Paul and Silas knew a God that can liberate. Can I tell you, midnight here refers to the darkest spot in their life. Midnight refers to the challenging period in their life. Midnight is going to refer to the challenging days of this. Days that may be worse than COVID-19. Hear me, sorry. This is dress rehearsal for what is to come. You think COVID, you have not seen anything yet? Paul and Silas were now in prison, but they knew a God upstairs. And the Bible says, at midnight, the prison is already dark. The prison is already dark. And by the way, there are other people in the prison there, but they were the only ones calling on God. Sometimes other people will be going through trials like yourself, but you got to stand up and stand up. You got to make a difference. You know a God that they don't know. Why are you then saying, my God, my Savior, my Jesus who came, and why aren't you calling on him? But instead, many of us, we complain. We murmur instead of giving the praise. All things, it's easy to say. It's easy for us to say, in all things, give thanks. But when the trials come, the Bible says, Paul and Silas pray uh, in the darkest part of the night. Uh, in the, at midnight, at midnight. The prison is dark and it's midnight. It's growing up. Yet still, they pray. Uh, and they also sang, they pray, and they sang praises unto God. The Bible says, the prisoners heard me. The prisoners, those who were in in the situation, locked up, heard them. Paul and Silas, even if it was supposed to be in a weakness. But I like verse 26. It says, and suddenly, we're talking about midnight miracles here. And suddenly, in the midst of their persecution, they, 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 they were privileged because of the And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Why were they so privileged? Because they called on God. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. Hey, hello, somebody. It's liberation time. And immediately, in all doors were open. In other words, the prison bars were now open. The chains, everyone's hands were loose. Notice the text, yes? Everyone's. What does that seem to suggest to you tonight? If everyone bands, were loose, it means that the other prisoners would have gotten freedom too. It means that the other prisoners who heard would have believed. It means that the other prisoners were not privileged to be free because Paul and Silas was the prison. Sometimes you're in a situation and God has you in it, so somebody has to be freedom. It's not always about you and I. But God will use us to help somebody else. My brother, my sister, when the trials come, when the media come, when the crisis come, remember the songs of Zion. Remember, remember the prayers of remember the prayers of the heart. Remember that we, we pray and God deliver. Remember that we pray and God deliver. Remember we pray and God will give us one more chance. So we have to love him tonight. We've got to stand tonight because he gave us one more chance. Tonight he's helping somebody, even in the midnight crisis. What are you going through tonight? Somebody may be faced with diabetes, struggling with cancer, maybe having a heartache, maybe a backache, maybe a toothache. What are your challenges tonight? Somebody needs to give their heart to God and even in your home tonight. You are quarantined because of this, because of this midnight crisis, because of the COVID nineteen. But like the other prisoners, you can hear the gospel tonight. You can respond. You can be set free tonight. All we've got to do is to remember the God of tears. Will you be persecuted? You'll be persecuted. Only for
for doing good. But remember, God is still waiting. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name should just humble themselves and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, then will I hear from them. And I will forgive the sin and I will heal their life. We serve a mighty God. Tonight I want to pray for somebody. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what God knows. He knows your sorrows. He knows your joys. He knows what pleases. He knows what annoys. But he'll tell you what you ought to do. He'll tell you how to try. The song says, and so we walk together. My Lord. I'm going to encourage you tonight. If you're watching by YouTube. Just put a V beside your name. Just a V. If, if you're somebody who's going to put a V, the pastor will leave his email address. The internet email address. You can contact somebody tonight. Help is on the way. You're not alone. God wants to help you through midnight tonight. If you're on Facebook, Make an indication. If you're on, if you're on Zoom, leave a message. Somebody, God has somebody tonight who wants to help you. Somebody who wants to pray with you. Somebody who wants to give an encouraging word with you. I don't know who you are, but God knows. Let us pray. Let us pray tonight. Father in heaven, somebody is going through some crisis tonight, but we know. That there is nothing that you cannot do. And when we cannot trace your hand, oh God, we can trust your heart. Help somebody tonight. Bring somebody out of their midnight crisis, out of the darkness that they're in. The translation, maybe it's an abusive relationship. Maybe somebody is on the verge of committing suicide. God, we don't know. But may they remember that when silence were in the midnight crisis, they prayed, they sang, they called on you, and all God sent them in. Not all of them, but the other prisoners also. So God, speak a word to somebody's heart tonight. So they and we know that who you have set free is free. So Lord, thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. We thank you because we know it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. And we ask that God will continue to keep you as you continue to help, help someone to reach the kingdom. We are going to sing to close, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. Number 306. After the singing, Sister Jonas will give us the benediction. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy cross bear.
tonight to let us touch the hem of your garment Lord and to see a miracle in our lives dear Jesus we thank you for bringing us safely throughout the week so that we can see another day we thank you dear Lord that you give us the privilege to can talk to you not because anything good that we have done Lord but it's your grace and your mercy that is that has brought us through, dear Jesus. We ask you to be with us, Lord, in every situation and to give us a new blessing each day. Touch our heart, dear Lord, and not to just give us sweetness so that we can be happy, but to give us a heart full of faith so that we can trust you. We can depend on you, dear Lord. We can talk to you. We can pray without ceasing because we see the time that we are living in now. Lord, I even understand that your sealing has begun. Dear Jesus, have mercy upon us, dear Jesus. Straighten our walk with you so that you can say, my people, walk with me. Lord, Amen. Amen. First of your word, we ask you to continue, continue, Lord, to be with us in every situation. Be with us, Lord, and so that we can develop this, this special trust and faith in you. Lord, continue to be our God in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, um, Sister Jonas. Um, good night, everyone. Good night, good night. I hope you have an awesome rest of week. Let me take this opportunity to remind you that we um, resume service on Sabbath starting at 9.15 and we go for the entire day as we worship together as brothers and sisters in the Family of God district. Feel free to share the link. Um, with those you, you connect to, everyone who knows you should know that you are connected online. Um, our speaker for Sabbath will be um, Pastor um, Barrington McLean. So we invite for you to join with us as we fellowship together on that platform. Oh, Let me say a very big thank you to our speaker for tonight.